Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets and thank you for watching this video. So this is part four of .NET Blazor Beginner to Advanced tutorial series. In this video, we are going to see about JavaScript interop. So first, let's see what is JavaScript interop. So a Blazor application can invoke JavaScript functions from .NET methods or C# -sharp code, and also we can invoke .NET methods or C# -sharp code from JavaScript functions. So we can do it in both ways. So these scenarios are called JavaScript interoperability, or we can call it as JS interop. So please subscribe to our channel named Coding Droplets if you have not subscribed it yet. And also don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will get notified once we upload new videos. So I have opened our Blazor application, demo application in Visual Studio. So if you are new, new to this video tutorial series, you can find the playlist link in the video description and you can open the link and find the previous videos. So if you are new to Blazor, I request you to watch the previous videos. We have already explained so many things in Blazor development. Okay, now let's see how we can use JavaScript interop in our application. So for explaining about JavaScript interop, let me create a new Razor component. Clicking on add and erase the component. So here I'm name, naming this as sample JavaScript. Yeah, that is enough, sample JavaScript. Okay, and let me name, oh sorry, let me mention the page URL, sample JavaScript. Fine. Also, let me create a menu option to access this page. So in Razor, oh sorry, in Blazor, we inside shared folder, we have a nav menu option. So in our main layout, if you open the main layout, you can see here in this demo project, uh, here there is a nav menu component is used. Okay, so nav menu component is here. So inside nav menu, we can see uh, so many nav links. So we will be covering about navigation in our upcoming session. So I'm not going in detail about navigation. So here what I'm doing is I'm creating one more option here and naming this as sample JavaScript, fine. Now, the link to this page is the URL which we have created here, sample hyphen JavaScript, fine. Let me run the application and check whether it is opening the page. Application is getting compiled here, yeah, it has started. Fine, now the index page has been loaded and we can see the menu option here, sample JavaScript. So let me click on it. Yes, fine, so the page is getting opened. Now inside this particular Razor component, the new Razor component, we are implementing the methods of JavaScript intro. So first let's see how we can call a JavaScript function from our .NET method or a C sharp code. So let me close this application. And I'm moving to the sample JavaScript Razor file. And here I'm creating a button. Okay. And this is just showing an alert. So I've named it, uh, I have given alert here. Now creating a private void method named show alert. 
fine. Now, giving the click event for the button on click is e equals show alert. Fine. Now, inside this particular show alert method, we are going to call our JavaScript function, uh, a JavaScript function to show alert. For that, we need to inject IJS runtime. So IJ, uh, we have already explained about dependency injection in our previous video. So in Blazor, IJS runtime is a default or, oh yeah, it is a default de uh, injector dependency. So we can use it in any Razor components. So if you open the program.cs class, we, there is no inje dependency injection mentioned here, but still we can use IJS runtime. It is a default injector dependency. So I'm closing this. Now for IJS runtime, I'm providing a name like uh, JS runtime. Okay. Now in the uh, show alert method, what I'm doing is JS runtime dot invoke async, invoke void async. So there are two methods, invoke async and invoke void async. So we will be discussing about invoke async in uh, in the upcoming session or after this, after completing invoke void async. Okay, so first let me discuss about invoke void async. This method is used if we are not returning any value from the JavaScript function. So here we are just showing the alert and we don't need to return any value from that function. So here I'm, I have opened the bracket. Now first, we can provide alert. So this is a JavaScript function. You know, uh, you might be knowing it. Um, so normally, I will just show you uh, how the JavaScript function works. So if we provide alert of uh, some message here, so this is the JavaScript function. Okay. So here, what we are going to do is to implement the same kind of JavaScript function in this on click event. So first let me show you how this works, this JavaScript function. I'm running my application. It is getting opened. And here what we can do is we can open the developer console window. Okay, we can press F12 for that. Okay. Mm. Sorry, uh, here I'm doing one thing. Okay, I'm moving this developer console to the bottom of my page or my browser window. <clears throat> now here I'm giving this JavaScript function and you can see that it is showing an alert, some message here. Okay, we can provide whatever message we need. So now uh, instead of some message, I'm just giving hello world. Now you can see it is showing hello world here. So this is alert method, a normal JavaScript function. So now I'm going to implement the same using JS runtime. So from our C sharp method, we are calling this JavaScript function. So alert, now you can see here in alert, we have provided the message as a parameter. So it is a string parameter, a string variable or a string parameter. So in this, for passing the parameters, what we can do is we can put a comma, then we can provide as many parameters we need. So if I have some three parameters, what I can give is parameter one, the value of parameter one, then the value of parameter two, then the value of parameter three, sorry, three. In this way, we can, I can give as many parameters what I need. But here, anyway, for alert, we only need to provide one parameter. So what I'm doing is 
I'm giving this, I'm removing all, and uh, now I'm just showing hello world. Uh, okay, and hello world from C sharp method or from method or from C sharp method, let it be there. Fine, now I'm clicking on hot reload and opening my browser, fine. Now I'm closing this developer console window. We don't need it. Now going to this page and you can see that alert button here. I'm clicking on that and you can see the alert here, hello world from C sharp method. So here what we have done is we have called a JavaScript function from our C sharp code. Now let me show you how we can return a value from a JavaScript function. So I'm just clicking OK. And here for showing that, I'm opening the console window first. And I'll show you one more JavaScript method which we can use, confirm. And as a parameter, we can show some message. Um, Hi, okay, I'm just, or hello world, okay. Message, it can be anything, okay, fine. So now it is showing hello world and there are two buttons, okay and cancel. So if I'm pressing okay, you can see that it is returning a true. Now again, I'm calling the same confirm method, JavaScript method and I'm clicking cancel and now it is returning a false value. So now let's see how we can return this value, this true or false Boolean value to our C sharp code. Okay, so for showing that, I'm just minimizing my browser. Now, uh, here I'm changing uh, or uh, I'm creating one more method, private void show confirm. Okay, and here I'm creating one more button, button on click, show confirm. And here, display confirm, okay, fine. Now, in the same way, what I'm doing is, okay, for showing that value, I'm doing one thing, creating a span here, okay. And let me find a variable, private string confirm result, okay. And we are showing this confirm result inside this span. So at confirm result, okay, fine. Sorry, uh, not at confirm result. Um, oh, yes, at confirm result. Sorry. Fine. Now, what I'm doing is var result equals js runtime dot invoke async. And here we can mention the type of data or the, uh, the type of the written value, what we are going to receive from the JavaScript function. So we know that as it is a true or false value, we can mention it as bool. Now, in the same way, I'm passing the parameters. So here, uh, sorry, not parameters. First, I'm passing the identifier. So the identifier is confirmed. So that is the JavaScript function. And now the parameters to confirm JavaScript function. So do you need to proceed? Okay. So now we will receive, okay, invoke as it is a async method, what we can do is we can make this function an async function, async task, okay. Now we can await for the re result. 
now we will get a boolean value in this result variable okay now what i am doing is confirm result is equal to result to string okay i'm changing the value of confirm result here now let me hot reload it and moving back to the browser window fine i'm closing this console developer options okay so now i'm clicking on display confirm and you can see do we need to proceed i'm clicking on ok and here it is showing true so as it is in a single line uh, one moment i'm doing one thing i'm moving this to here okay hot reload reloaded okay so now it is true now again i'm clicking on display confirm now clicking on the cancel button and you can see now the value is false so we are clearly we are receiving or we are successfully receiving the value from a javascript function so in our previous session uh, in our index page we are showing some contacts we have implemented some functionality to show some contacts so here you know that we have delete button to delete the contacts okay so let's implement a confirm uh, a, a, let's implement a confirm before deleting those contacts so let's see how we can do that so i'm opening my visual studio and going to index Razor file, uh, not Razor file. For index, we have created a partial class. So we have also explained about partial classes in our previous session. So here we have uh, where we have implemented. Okay, I think uh, that is in our component. So contact list is our component. Yes, here it is. So in this contact list component. We have implemented the delete functionality. So this delete contact is here. So we are passing this delete contact method as a parameter. Fine. So what we can do is we need to contact delete a contact after confirmation. Okay. So in the same way, we can inject js i uh, sorry ijs runtime so i'm naming it as js runtime or simply js you can provide whatever name you need okay now here war confirm equals js dot invoke async boo sorry we are receiving boolean value and here the identifier is confirm and the parameter is okay here we are receiving the contact as a parameter here for in this delete method so we can show some meaningful message do you sorry do you need to delete and here I'm showing the contact name here. Contact dot first name, then space contact dot last name from contacts list. Okay, fine. That is enough, and we will receive a boolean value here in this confirm oh sorry we need to yeah we need to make this an async method as here we are using invoke async now oh, mentioning here task async task and awaiting this fine now we will receive a boolean value here so if confirm equals true then what we have to we have to remove this sorry we have to yeah delete this contact 
from the contacts list. Otherwise, we don't need to do anything. So hot reload. Okay, it won't work in that way. So let me read the application. Fine, it is getting compiled and opened. Yeah, it is opening now. So it will open the index page. So we can directly try removing the contacts from the list. I think some three contacts will be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the contacts are loading. Yeah, the three contacts are there. Fine. So now let me try to delete beta boob. And here you can see now in the message, do you need to delete beta boob from contacts list? I'm pressing OK here and it got deleted. Now I'm trying to delete George David. So it is asking me, do you need to delete George David from contacts list? Uh, but I'm clicking cancel and it is not deleted. So hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave a comment. So this is how we can use IJS runtime. We can inject IJS runtime and use it to execute JavaScript functions from our C -sharp code. Now let's go more in detail and let's see how we can implement or how we can execute a C -sharp code from a JavaScript function. So for invoking a C -sharp method from JavaScript, there are two different ways. The first one is using a public static method. So let's see that uh, let's see that option first, how we can invoke a public static C -sharp method from a JavaScript function. So for that, here in our sample JavaScript.razor file, I'm creating a new public static uh, task of string. So let's assume this particular public static method is returning a string value. So here, now uh, I'm naming this as get value or yeah, get value from method. Okay, now here I'm returning a hard coded value task dot from result of string and here I'm returning hello world okay fine hello world from c sharp oh we are already have the same kind of message here so just hello world fine that is sufficient now, uh, in order to call this particular method, we have to use one attribute. Uh, in order to use the, uh, call this method from a JavaScript function, we have to use this attribute, j is invocable. So then only, sorry, then only this particular method can be invocable from JavaScript function. Okay, now, next I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. So let me create a new, js folder here inside www root now inside that folder i'm creating a javascript file so yeah here it is and let me name it as sample.js fine now inside this what i'm going to do is i'm creating a new function so get value or call method fine now here inside this method what we have to give is dot net dot invoke method async okay so please uh, keep in mind that dot net this is key sensitive so you have to use in the same way dot net d and n should be in uppercase then invoke method I think this is the method to invoke a C sharp method from JavaScript okay now the next we have to pass two parameters so the first parameter is the project name so here I'm copying the project name here fine 
Now the next parameter is the method name. So that is get value from method. This is the C sharp method. Okay. Now this in uh, once this invoke method is called, we will get a result or we will get a response from this C sharp code. It is a string value. So what we can do is dot then result such that we can provide something here. So here this result will be holding the value what it received from this particular method. So it will be receiving hello world. Okay, so here after receiving it, what I'm doing is I'm just showing it in alert, alert message from method, yes, result, okay. Fine, hope you're clear. Now we need to import this uh, the JavaScript file in our application. So I'm opening the layout.cshtml. So as this is a layout file, uh, layout, uh, as this is a layout uh, yeah, file, it will be used in all the pages. So we can directly import it here. Script source equals dot js slash sample js. Okay. Now oh, we can provide the type as well if needed. JavaScript text, okay, text slash JavaScript, fine. So this is enough. Now let me run the application and see. Okay, um, one more thing we have to do. Yeah, let it be here. But here now what I'm doing is in our, yeah, this sample, JavaScript file, we need to place a button here to call that JavaScript function. So I'm placing a button here, button, so I'm naming it as call method, and just providing the on click event. So this is the normal on click event, not the uh, blazor on click event so in blazor on click event is at on click here this is the normal on click so it will call the javascript function which we have provided here so here i am providing this call method javascript function okay fine now hot reload so hope it is loaded yeah it is loaded now i'm clicking on the call method yeah you now you can see the message from the method is hello world so it is successfully getting the string from our public static C sharp method. So this is how we can call a public static method, a C sharp method from JavaScript. Next, we are going to see how we can call a C sharp method from our class, from our class instance. So instead of a public static method, a normal method inside our class instance. So how we can make a call to that particular C-sharp method and receive the return value in our JavaScript function. So I'm clicking OK here and just minimizing this. We can make use of this hot reload after making the changes. So now let me create one more function here. Function call instance method okay fine now here we are passing one parameter so this parameter holds the object of our class instance okay so if we are passing or if you are invoking this particular method from our sample javascript eraser so it will uh, it, we have to pass the instance of this particular, uh, the object, uh, we have to pass the object of the particular instance. Okay, so I'm naming this as instance object. Okay, fine. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm creating one. Now what we need to do is once we call this JavaScript function, we have to call a normal 
asynchronous method here. So let's say I'm creating a new one, public async, um, okay, public async task of here, this one also return string. Let's say uh, the same kind of method which we have created before, but that is a static public static method, but this is a normal method get value from instance okay fine now we need to provide the attribute js invocable as we need to invoke this from our javascript function now here this will return in the same way um hello world from instance fine okay now let me call this from our javascript function so instance object dot get value from instance, oh, sorry, uh, instance object dot invoke method async, the same thing. Now here we have to pass uh, the first we need to pass. Okay, we need to pass uh, this method name. Yeah, this is the only thing we need to pass, no need of uh, the uh, uh, project name why right? because we are calling it from this instance object so we just need to pass the method name for this now uh, yeah if we just need to call a void method this is enough but as we are returning a result so we can use the same method here fine then uh, once we receive once this uh, function received the result we are showing in the same way in an alert uh, yeah, in an alert message. Okay. Okay. So now what we need is in a button click, we need to call this particular method. So once this particular JavaScript function is called, it will invoke this particular C sharp method in our class. So in order to call this JavaScript function, we have to pass the object which is the instance of our class or the object of the class instance. So for doing that or for passing that particular object, what I'm doing is I am calling, uh, I'll do one thing, I will create a new button for it and I'll show you how we are making that JavaScript call. And uh, here call, instance method okay now here i'm using normal on click event the blazer on click okay and i'm creating a method for this so just before uh, yeah here i'm creating a method private async task call javascript or call uh, invoke method javascript okay i'm calling that javascript from this method and here i'm binding it with this fine okay <clears throat> now here what i'm doing is as we have did before i'm using js runtime dot invoke void async okay now here the identifier is call instance method and the parameter so here we have to pass the parameter that is that should be the ob uh, object of our class instance so for that what we can do is dot net object reference okay dot create 
of this. So this means our class. So yeah, here it is showing that we can await it. So let me await it, fine. Okay, so uh, this means our class from which we are calling this method. So it will create the object uh, or it will pass the object of that particular class. And inside the same class, we have the function get value from instance. So here from the same object in JavaScript, we are invoking the method named get value from instance. Hope you are clear with this. If you have any doubt, please come into the video. I will try to uh, reply as soon as possible. You, sh uh, you should be clear about this point. Okay. So now let me run this application. And I'll show you how this is working. Okay. It is getting loaded. Page is getting loaded. It's opening. Okay, so now I'm going to our sample JavaScript page and clicking on call instance method. And you can see message from method is hello world from instance. So uh, we are showing this particular message we are returning this particular value from this particular method, hello world from instance. Okay, this is how we can call a C sharp method, which is in our class, a normal C sharp method, which is in our class instance, not a public static method. Okay, now here, what I need to show you one more thing is uh, this .NET object reference dot create can be used to create any kind of objects. So if we need to for example, we are having a new contact here, work contact is equal to new contact. Okay, and yeah, with uh, some uh, first name equals uh, John. Okay, something like that, fine. I'm just giving the first name. I just need to show you one thing. So now this is a contact object. So I can create a uh, .NET object reference of contact as well. So it will work. But here in our JavaScript, this function won't work. By, why? Because that particular object is not having invoke uh, method as in function. So here it will not work. But what, I'm, what I need to say is if you need to pass uh, an object, a contact object to your, uh, uh, not a contact, uh, whatever object to your JavaScript, you can do it, th it in this way. But here we need to pass the object of our class. So I have given this here. Okay, fine, hope you're clear with this point. So these two are the ways to call a C-sharp method from a JavaScript function. The first one is calling a public static method and the second one is calling a C-sharp class instance method. Hope you're clear with these two. So give me a thumbs up for this video if you have not given yet. And also please leave a comment. So now let's move to the next topic. Next, we are going to see about JavaScript isolation. So isolation means now you can, okay, now you know that we have already created one JavaScript file, sample.js, but we are using it only in our sample JavaScript.razor file, okay? We don't need it to be used any other Razor components. So, uh, but we have, used uh, this script tag here in our layout. So what will happen is when the application loads, the application will download this particular JavaScript file to the client device. So we don't need that to happen. We just need this, uh, we just need to download this particular JS file once the user access sample JavaScript.razor file or once the user is clicking this uh, call invoke method JavaScript. Now let's assume that uh, we only need uh, uh, this particular JavaScript while clicking this particular button, okay? The button is called instance method. So we only need to download it while clicking that button. So this particular method will improve the performance of our application. Why? Because 
the JavaScript won't get downloaded while the application starts. It will only get downloaded when the user needs it. So let's implement that. So first what I'm doing is I'm creating a variable private IJS object reference, okay? Or else I'll do one thing. Anyway, if we need only it in this particular method, I'll do one thing, var sample JS reference, sorry, reference equals Now, uh, here what I'm doing is I'm importing that particular JavaScript file. So next, what I'm doing is I'm using this IJS runtime. So JS runtime dot invoke void async. Oh, sorry, invoke, not invoke void. We need to return the object reference here. So invoke async, and this will return a IJS, IJS object reference. So this is the type of JavaScript references in Blazor. Okay, now here I'm giving the identifier as import, and the next parameter is the path to the file. So slash js slash sample dot js okay so now what will happen is once this particular code is getting executed that time only this javascript file will get downloaded to the client device okay so i think we have already removed it from here no okay fine we can remove it from here good and now okay we only need uh, this call instance method now fine now here as we have imported it and if we need to call this method we can we have to export this so export function call instance method okay fine now what i have to do is now previously we have used uh, js runtime to invoke this method now we cannot use js runtime for that so what I'm using here is, let me comment this out. Oh wait, sample JS reference. This is the JS object reference which we have received while calling this particular method. Okay, uh, dot invoke, sorry. Uh, this is, oh, sorry, I have not awaited it. Okay, now I have given await here. Now that is IJS object reference, so fine. Okay, so invoke async. Okay, here we have used invoke void async. Okay, we are not returning anything. So invoke void async. Now we can use the same thing, call instance method and uh, all of the things here. Fine. Okay, now let me run the application and I will show you how this works. And we can also see uh, whether this sample.js file is getting downloaded initially or not. So it won't get downloaded as we have removed it from our layout file. So we can see that. I will show you how we can see that. So now I am opening our uh, developer options and in network. You'll be showing the files here. Let me try to open it like this. Fine. Now you're able to see it. So you can see that now we don't have sample.js file here okay it is not downloaded to this uh to the client device yet or to the browser so now i'm going to sample javascript raise a component fine and still it is not downloaded 
now I'm clicking on call instance method and immediately you can see now sample JS file is here. So once I click that, uh, it will execute uh, this, this particular method and it will download the JS file to my browser. And once it got downloaded, next it will run this particular, in, uh, it will invoke the call instance method, which, is, which we have written in our JavaScript function. So now you can see uh, it has written hello world from instance, the same alert message. So this is how we can isolate the JavaScript files. And this is a, a good practice to do. Why? Because uh, it will only download the needed JavaScript files when user really needs it or from uh, when a user access that particular Razor component. Okay. so. These are the points what I need to discuss in this video. That's it for this video. Hope you liked it. So please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to this channel. And see you all in the next video. Thank you all.